on the ground, the real people, real issues. Today we are talking about a visual art and this is what we are doing today. We are coming to you live from Andy's studio today. Andy has the ability to capture texture and light. This is something that is phenomenal. At his age, his strength is in the ability to color using a pencil, whether be it colored, be the usual pencil we have. It is something we need to, to tap into. This picture, he says it took him between five hours to seven hours to actually draw it. This is reality on the ground. Looking at Omofubuka, a year called a day, a summit, Chomotwe. Nazarone Nagamba, no, this is what I'm going to do. We want to look at such a talent today, and it's an honor to be at Andy's studio. Good morning, Andy. Good morning, Mr. Magil. How have you been? I've been okay. <laughs> How about you? I'm good. So let's start with the simplest thing. How early do you get to office? Uh, I get to office around uh, 7.30. 7.30? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Today woke you a little bit earlier, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> But I always begin uh, drawing. Mm. My usual time of drawing begins at 8 sharp. 8 sharp? Yeah. And how old are you? I'm 29. Wow. There you have it. He's 29 years of age and he started his very journey to art. Visual art is a complex thing. Yeah. I want to know, uh, Andy, how did you start drawing? How did you get into this? Actually, I had a talent before. Mm. Because even I was one of the best students in my nursery. Wow. From nursery, primary, secondary, and university, I've yeah. been the best. Wow. Yeah, so I said art is uh, just a talent to me. It's a talent. It's just uh, I didn't uh, acquire it from an institution or from mm. a school, mm. but it was just a talent that's raised into me. So while why, why at the different institutions, let's look at university, you didn't do art? You did, did you major in drawing? Did yeah. you? Mm, actually, I didn't major in drawing. What did you major in? I majored in ceramics. That's, wow. uh, that's pottery. Yes. Yeah, that's what I majored in too. You didn't do this? Yeah, you didn't uh, major in drawing. When, just, your when your parents realized you had this talent, did they yeah. support you? What was their feedback like? Yeah, they supported me in that, actually when I was joining university, it mm. wasn't my idea. Mm -hmm. I never, I wanted to do tourism. Mm. That was my, my idea all along before. Mm. So my dad was like, no, I can't pay fees for, ah. for just uh, tourism. Mm. You have a talent, you just have to go in for industrial fine art. Wow. So that's why I had just doing fine art. Mm. My dad pushed me up mm. and I just found myself, yeah, doing, com the, doing the same thing and I was comfortable with it and wow. I was always the best. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ainamani, he's our artist today. And uh, I want to I want to tap into your, your motto frame. What's your mantra? What runs your daily life and you say, this is something I look up to every day? Yeah, uh, there are so many things and uh, currently I'm just running uh, an industry life now. Mm. I feel like art is just everything to me. Mm. Every day I just uh, walk and I just, uh, whenever I'm walking, I feel art. Mm. And uh, whenever I'm even on the internet, I just look and try to find out people who are better than me. Mm. And I just try to just uh, be like them. Because mm. there are so many artists out there yeah. who are just very good. Mm. And um, my dream is just uh, achieving that I be good mm. than anyone else. What makes you stand out from the other artists if you look around the country? There, there are many of them. Yeah. Some are actually more established. And I've seen uh, there is a guy in Kenya actually who actually does more like what you do. What makes you stand out from the other artists in Uganda and uh, East Africa at large? Yeah, what makes me stand out? It's just my technique. What is your technique? My technique is just uh, I get details so much and uh, I'm a, I call myself a hyper-realistic uh, artist. What is that? Hyper-realistic artist is just a person who captures everything into a drawing, into a picture mm -hmm. or, any, or a drawing. Yeah. I just bring out all the details without leaving anything out. That is your strength? Yeah, that's my strength. Well. When he mentions that, it brings me down to a couple of things he has actually uh, painted. There is this, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure you actually know these, the, the, these are uh, film actors uh, from Nigeria. Uh, we have my man Mendo here with a wife at the introduction ceremony there. And uh, we, we have a couple of them. They are still here. Um, look at that. Look at that. This is, it seems so easy for you to do. It seems so like, how long does it take for you to come up with such a good picture? Yeah, 
it uh, it depends on mm. uh, how the picture is because at times there are some people like old age people mm. the people who are aged at least uh, they have so many details mm. in that that one will almost take me around eight hours to nine hours hey, wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> so age determines yes. how long it takes for you to draw a particular person, definitely, right? Definitely, definitely. So um, out of them, let, let me say, if you're going to draw like uh, my friend, Kahindo Tafire, how long would it take you? No, for, for at least I have a maximum of age between like uh, 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 from one year mm. up to around uh, 35. Mm. Yeah, it almost takes me about six hours, seven mm. hours. But then when it comes to 70, Kahindo yeah. Tafiri, yeah. that will around, it will take me around 7 hours, 8 I hours. Sure yes. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Have you seen Kahindo Tafiri, yes, my friend? Yes. All right. Let's talk about, uh, I see here you have uh, my friend Frank Gashumba is already here. This, this is beautiful. This seems so easy. Um, let's talk about you as an artist. Yeah. What is one thing that you feel that it has always kept you going, regardless of the challenges you're facing? What has kept me going, of, uh, there are so many challenges along the way, but what has kept me going is just, uh, I want to pursue, I want to be the best mm. in the country and in the whole world. Mm. That's my goal, that's my main target. So I always, every day, just practice so hard so mm. that I be, my, I be the best. Mm. So many people have been the best, but then I feel like, no, I want to be on top there of it. More. Yeah, mm. I want to be on top of this game. Mm. And right now, people, people are saying, you know, Andy, you are the best, but I feel now I'm not the best. Mm. Because I, uh, around in the country, so many artists have, been, have just come up, mm. and when you look at their work, it's not uh, hyper, uh, hyper realistic. Mm. So what I'm uh, doing so much, I'm practicing every day. You mm. know, practice makes perfect. Yeah. In art, when, whenever you don't practice, you'll mm. not get there. You lose it. Yeah, you lose it. All right. Let's talk about the challenges. What are the biggest challenges that you're facing in your art industry, in the visual art especially? Currently, the, the biggest challenge, I would say, mm. software have just come up. Mm. And that would be my, best ch my biggest challenge. For now, a person, however much you tell a client, you know, I'm just a, I'm just a, a pencil realistic artist, mm. would not believe. Because whenever they look at my portraits, mm. they feel that maybe I use the software. Maybe, maybe you're using an app of internet or something? Yes, that's what they, that's what they think. Mm. And yet, it's not the case. So many uh, artists have just come up with that, mm. with the softwares. Yeah. So they just uh, edit pictures mm. and they just post and people feel like, yeah, that's so, uh, do, do, do you feel like technology is doing a disservice to people like definitely. you, actually, who are more stronger with your pencils? Definitely, definitely. And what does. is the way forward about that? Uh, the way forward is, uh, because for me, I've just put up a competition now mm. with the software. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm try, I've just tried so much as to just bring out my, the best in me. Mm. And whenever a person looks at my works and mm. compares to the... Uh, uh, software edited works mm. almost you feel like I'm just uh, far ahead mm. because I'm just competing with the camera now mm. that's what I may say I hear you yeah uh, do we do we have a forum that that you know brings together people like you in your arts industry like you you, you meet and you share ideas do you artists share or you selfish yeah we do share because <coughs> we always have exhibitions mm. So that's once we set, up, uh, we set up an exhibition, then people will come and share ideas. Mm. But though, so many artists don't come up for those exhibitions. Why do you think they don't come? They feel like they can't give out their techniques to mm. people. Because mm. we have a tendency whereby artists go into their room, they paint. Mm. You paint, a person will find paintings uh, like a thousand pieces, mm. and just within just in a room, mm. and look to himself there. Wow. Yet he can't expose his technique. Mm. That's what most uh, artists are feeling. To just uh, bring out a technique and they face a competition or mm. a challenge. Uh, that's mm. challenge. So, but for me, what I normally do, I just open. I'm just open. Mm. I do anything in just. Um, you know, do you think these ones who paint and they keep their own paintings in their rooms, wherever they keep them? Yeah. Um, is it something to do with esteem or is it something to do with um, artists to be selfish until you bring it out? Are they fearing critique and all that? Yeah, what I may say, mm. they are fearing to be criticized. Mm. And uh, they fear, uh, you know, I may say some are selfish, mm. some are not selfish. But mm. to a large extent, 
most people I may go as selfish mm. because you can't tell me you just uh, you are just locked into a room and you just do your work. No one just knows how you do it. Mm. And at the end of the day, you just bring out to sell their work. And mm. also, people will just have uh, that uh, intimacy in that they will just doubt. Mm. So however much you set up a place, now like me, mm. I set up a place. Mm. And people buy, and yeah. people come. Whichever price I said, mm. people come, and people will buy. People will buy. Because they know what I'm doing. Yes. So I'm just being realistic to them. Mm. That's, uh, that's one thing. Mm. And these artists, I, I urge all artists, let them come up, share your ideas with people. Because an idea shared mm. will just boost something yeah. out of it. Mm. And a person will learn. Mm. Also, the other person who learns will teach others. And that's how we are going to, get to keep a legacy just flowing year by year. Uh, so that forum where you are actually subscribed and uh, where you have many other artists, uh, what does this association do more in particular besides organizing arts exhibition? Mm -hmm. uh, do they bring up, uh, you know, workshops, uh, more, more learning skills from other experts from around the country or abroad? Or it's just a forum of, hey, I have an exhibition, Kuromokaga, then they come over. Yeah, this forum... Uh, specifically, we are just uh, like the current forum now we just had. Mm -hmm. We are just uh, we inter we invited so many guests from abroad, mm -hmm. so they had to come in and they support. Because uh, we are we wanted to look at where, but we pick out these kids on the street because when you move down downtown, mm -hmm. so seen. many kids have a talent. <coughs> yeah, so it. many kids have a talent. So at least we wanted to bring out those kids mm -hmm. and they just come on board. We just teach them mm -hmm. because. Those kids just, they lack something little. Mm. So once they get that, mm. then they will just be good. And okay. we, shall, we shall not have this challenge of kids have running across the streets all mm. the time. Mm. So I believe if at all people come on board and we just help these kids mm. because they need us. I right mean. now we are just running a campaign of, uh, with Youth for Uganda, mm. Save Omano Africa. Mm. This is just uh, a program whereby we are just picking out kids mm. with just uh, talents. Talent. And we are just boosting them. Mm. We just teach them on how they can go about it. Mm. So that's that's really a, a big uh, ch uh, chance mm. that we are the, we people who are who have a talent. At mm. least we can just share it with the rest. With the rest. Yeah. All right. What do you look for when you're looking for something to draw? What do you do? Do, do you look at landscape? Do you look at architectural buildings? Do you look at um, uh, skies? What really triggers your drawing? And you're like, I need to draw this. No, for, uh, you know, art has got uh, so many aspects. Because mm. now, for me, I just specialize it into one thing. Mm. I said I would just do portraits. That's human figure drawing. Mm. That's what I deal in. Mm. However much a client comes wanting other things, mm. I, just, uh, I just do. But then, my main intention is just on human beings. Human beings. Yeah. And it doesn't, ma it doesn't matter that uh, one wants a landscape or... But so long as there is a human being in that setting, then I will just appreciate it. But for now, I'm just basing on human beings, human and being. I, I specialize it. You know, mm. art, art, so many people, they don't think uh, art, you just do a variety. Mm. And I've realized that once you specialize something, mm. you just pick out some, uh, one thing, you earn from it. For now, I'm earning much from portraits. Mm. Uh, uh, so many artists, you will find them, hang on the buildings, writing letters, and so on. Mm. But of which, they are not stable in one position. Mm. For moments, stable in portraits. Mm. You'll not find me maybe writing somewhere, no, 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 no. I will just- You won't do graffiti? No, I don't, mm. do, I don't do that. You'll find me drawing, I just want that special one thing whereby I just deal with human beings. Uh, who is this one visual artist you're looking up to, the ones you've seen? Maybe you've seen many of them and uh, you're like, I want to be like this person. Mm. Maybe Picasso, you, 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 could, you could be one of those African boys who want to go beyond Picasso. Yeah. Uh, one artist is called uh, Grigori. Grigori. Uh, yeah, Grigori. Where is he from? He's a Brazilian artist. Mm. And this man has just got realistic artists. They are very, very prominent realistic artist pictures. Mm. Whenever you see his work, you feel like, yeah, the work is just seen too. He's just breathing. Mm. So that's one person who has just been motivating me all the time. Mm. And at the time we chat, we chat together, I just send him text messages. He, t he tells me the areas to improve. I send him my works. Mm. And he's like, no, you can do it. Wow. So I feel like every day I'm motivated by his works. Wow. Yeah. Let's talk about what you'd love to see in the industry grow 
in a couple of years to come. What, what, what would you wish to see in the visual arts industry? Yeah, what I would love, I would actually would, I would urge the government, mm. let it set up at least a center mm. whereby this center is going to accommodate all artists. Right now, once you look at the, uh, into the country mm. history, mm. arts are, very, are stranded. Mm. They don't have a, a permanent position where they are. Mm. You, some agree, you not just uh, come to Kampala mm. and you feel there is one place where you will find an artist. Yeah. You will just look into your friends and just contact you, ask them, oh, do you know any artist? Mm. If at all we had a center, maybe like, like the national, now if at all you see the national uh, mm. theater. If at all we had such a place, mm. and you know, that's a, a place whereby it's collecting artists, mm. visual artists, mm. at least that would boost. But I've seen a couple of paintings at the National Theatre uh, in the back mm. around where the market is. Yeah. Um, but before the government comes in, as artists, and you said this is how much we have, maybe the government can add on to this, or maybe NGOs can add on this. Are we going to wait for the government to help us do everything? Definitely, we shall not wait for the mm. government. Then what are we doing? For, for example, mm. now like me, mm. I've set up uh, and the home of art mm. as a company. We are just uh, recruiting mm. all people with the talent. Mm. And whichever, uh, whatever little we get mm. out of our works, I believe it's just uh, add, uh, boosting someone's income mm. out there, mm. whoever is just participating in it. And for the government, why say we need the government to come in? At mm. least the little they have, they mm. can just invest in, in us. Whereby the country needs us at mm. large because there is nothing that is produced in the country mm. without an artist. Mm. Everything just uh, it's our touch. Mm. So why I need the? I will, I will not say all the time I need the government to just intervene. Yeah. No. Just let how, let them at least the little they have mm. they can just invest in us. Okay. We don't we don't mind mm. because already we just have a skill. Mm. It's just. Uh, we need just something little mm. to just boost it up. I hear you. Yeah. So, and do you get do you get um, people orders from beyond the borders, or you just get Ugandan orders? And if someone is to order for now, now like a picture like this of um, of Frank, yeah, it looks beautiful. It's a good piece. Mm. How much would this cost? And uh, yes, if you're getting these orders from abroad, yeah. uh, what is your rate card like? Yeah, now like that of Gashumba. Mm. This is an ordinary person. This is a Ugandan person. Mm. That piece is 350,000. Okay. And when it comes to abroad, mm. because I've got so many clients abroad, I've got, nowadays I have fans who are mm. just uh, loving my work. I've been mm. posting my work. So many people like my works. I've been getting orders from across the world. Mm. Currently, I've just uh, got an order from Nigeria. Mm. These guys, this is uh, Chine Dike Dieze mm. and Osita Yeme from Nigeria. Mm. These people contacted me through Instagram, through social media. Mm. and. They just loved my work, they said no, and they just have to do for us some works. Mm. And I did for them. And but then the charging, the charge Depends. changes. It mm. changes. Mm. Now they remember So they are you charging dollars or <laughs> euros? <laughs> they are charging dollars. Okay. Whereby of course there are shipping costs. Mm. Because whenever I do work from abroad, mm. I have to ship it. Yes. So the ch the price changes. Oh I hear you. Yeah. Um okay. Now this is neighbor <laughs> because this is more like a hundred dollars, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. Uh, the one of, of Frank. So what determines the price? Is it the age? Is it the size of the paper you're using? Um, is it the time you spend drawing the picture? What determines the price? Actually, what determines the price is just the time, uh, my, the time I give in. Mm. Because this is a talent. I charge a talent. Yeah. Because whenever you just go to town and you just buy a paper, this is just even, it's not less than 20,000. Mm. So I charge time and uh, I charge according to size because uh, the, uh, the bigger the size of the paper, mm. that's how long I will take. Wow. Because you find someone wants a big, a, a large piece, well, the meaning I would spend almost like about 12 hours doing a big piece. Mm. So I charge according to my time. Wow. Invest a bit. All right. That said, let's hear your challenges. You said you, you want what the government wants to come in, you want an umbrella that is actually going to look up at, to a couple of things. What are the challenges are you facing, you as artists today, especially in our society of Uganda? Mm. The challenges, mm. the challenges are so many, Chamagelo. Mm. Right now, when you move, uh, for me, for example, mm. the materials, 
for example the pencil i need good pencils mm. when i just run pencil is the one in street ordinary pencils don't give the best product okay what uh what right now you are saying mm. at least i've tried to sketch out some good pencils yeah. a friend of mine just sent me some pencils from abroad mm. so if at all we had maybe this kind of pencils in like in our stationaries early stock mm. we would buy at least we would buy mm. we would buy them at, at a cheaper price okay. but now you find you find myself shipping mm. a set of pencil which is goes for about four hundred thousand. Mm. so that is too much expensive for us mm. And, and, and we are just beginners mm. because I've been into this thing of drawing about five years now. Mm. So I find it so much. I've just invested much in it. Mm. Almost every month, I just put, I just invest in about six hundred thousand mm. to just buy materials mm. for uh, the papers. I normally buy from Kenya. I got wow. all the stock I order. Mm. They just buy from Kenya. Wait, 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 wait. Why, why, why are you getting them from Kenya? You mean we don't have paper here in Kampala, or rather in Uganda, that can give us this much quality? We have, we have paper. Hey. But then, the, if at all you look at that paper, mm. it's not like ordinary paper. Mm. It's not an ordinary paper. Oh, no, 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 it's not there. Mm. Actually, what we have in common, we have bond paper. Mm. And this, uh, these, are lay, uh, these are laid papers. Mm. They are textured papers. They mm. give a product just as different. Okay. You feel the product will just come out perfectly. Well, look at my products. Mm. Look at the kind of works people have produced. Mm. You can't compare with my works. They are different. Look at the texture. Mm. The paper has got a different texture. Yeah. And that texture adds value to work. Mm. At times when you are drawing a person, maybe putting on clothes, you will find texture making itself because of the paper. Okay. Already it has that texture. I hear you. Yeah. All right. Uh, and before we actually sign out of this conversation, it has been really eye-opening. Um, if someone wants to follow you online, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, what are your handles? Because someone maybe could want, maybe Otafiri wants you to draw him. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, if a person wants to follow me on Facebook, someone can use Prince Andrew. You can just me find you can just find me up. Then uh, we have a page of uh, the home of arts mm. that's uh, on Facebook. Mm. Then Instagram we have Ainaman mm. Dash Andrew. Mm. That's my Instagram handle. Mm. Then on Twitter we have at Ainaman Andrew. Andrew. Yeah, that's Twitter. All right. Well, there you have it. All I can say, whether his subjects are architecture, or floral, landscape, or human, he's able to infuse the drawing with light and mystery. Andrew brings pictures to life this way with his colored pencil or the usual pencils we actually have he brings it to life visual art it's something we need to celebrate so i think this is a wake-up call to all the parents and his parents supported him he's a youth that with the government he has done something and then he's urging government just to add a little bit of value that he can actually flourish in his business this is a wake-up call to all of us as the youth of this country before we complain, before we lament, what have you done with your talent? Have you taken time to go down into your innermost frame and realize the talent you have? And when you've realized it, what are you using it for? Or you're just, you know, doing shisha and you're playing betting and all that. So take time, realize what you can do. And by the way, if you're Uganda, Banange, support such talent, support young people who are doing something. Until next time, I'm Andrew Chamagero Omontua, and see it's still morning at NTV.